I am the CEO of Sphero. Uh, I've been doing educational and competitive robotics for the last 23 years, and uh, I'm here with Adrian. Hi, everybody that's joining. My name is Adrian. Uh, I'm an education content manager here at Sphero, um, and I have 14 years of experience in math engineering and robotics classrooms, as well as a ton of experience in competitive robotics. And we're welcoming everybody that's joining right now on our very first Instagram Live, and we cannot wait to introduce you to our newest product, Blueprint. Yeah, so Blueprint is a, a system we're excited about. Um, over the course of the last 15 years, uh, robotics has been introduced to education and experimented with. And, and we've tried some things, things have worked, things haven't worked, but what we found is a lot of robotics are still not that accessible to the majority of students in the classroom. So what we're trying to do with Blueprint is create a product that is really um, meant for the classroom time. So lots of consideration on building quickly, being able to take apart quickly, part management, and really kind of led the entire development with the content that we wanted to teach. And now Adrian can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, engineering uh, in the classroom, in my experience, especially with students at a middle school and high school level that don't have a ton of experience, um, can be really intimidating. Um, I'm sure a lot of you all in your education experience have, have um, had that same experience, um, where if kids don't get introduced to these concepts when they're really young, uh, the more that they age and the more that they go through the education system, it just seems like something they're not interested in, something that's too hard for them, um, and they just don't um, start getting into these STEM fields unless we catch them really, really young. So Blueprint, um, we definitely wanted to hit on the older audience, so that middle school, high school level, but make it really, really accessible and non-intimidating. Um, but along with that, um, teaching these subjects for teachers can also sometimes be really hard and really intimidating if you don't have experience in um, outside the classroom with some of these concepts like engineering and CAD and mechanical design. Um, and so we wanted to make this system really accessible for teachers too. Um, so we started by aligning all of our lessons to NGSS and STSL, which are the national leading standards um, for engineering education right now. Um, and from there, we wanted to make it so that you could complete lessons in one class period. So like Paul was saying earlier, the system is made to go together easily, take apart easily, uh, and be able to show a concept really quickly and then move on to the next class period. So you can see right here, uh, this is an example of one of our lessons at Incline Plane. So you can easily see how you can pull this um, cart up and down and how it is pretty um, easy to do it uh, or a little bit harder to do it when it's up here, but if we move this down uh, and create a different angle for this incline plane, then it's even easier because your angle is not quite as steep. So uh, it goes the same distance up and down, but it's way easier to pull it up when it's here versus up here. Um, and you can see that I was able to switch those really, really quickly, demonstrate a simple machine and a mechanical advantage concept really easily. And Paul, you can kind of explain the one that you're working with. And sure, so again, the entire build system is based around, let's teach these concepts in the quickest way possible in the classroom so we can spend more of our time having the kids repeat, iterate, and absorb the concepts than they are building and taking apart. So we really focus on trying to take the part count down, the small minuscule parts down, so the system is just organically big. The base truss, as we call it, is just big. It's that way so that we can make really foundationally sound structures and not have to put a whole bunch of parts reinforcing uh, all the things to make it work. So it really makes it easy to take apart, put back together, um, re move gears around if we wanted to move them around, which I'll do while Adrian uh, has some more discussion about this, and really just be able to teach um, as much as we can using this product. And so like it's not centered around oh, I gotta spend the whole classroom building a thing, spend 10 minutes learning, and then go take it apart again. We really wanted to shift that paradigm, which when the earliest earlier robotics programs that we did in the classroom, you know, back 10 years ago, they really were just focused about getting people interested in doing it at all. 
um, but we learned a lot over the course of that time, and so Blueprint is really the manifestation of all those learnings over the last decade plus. And so uh, with Blueprint, again, we really try to take this content first approach. So um, our Blueprint system is gonna come with tons and tons of content. All, every single lesson that we provide with Blueprint, um, you're going to get a teacher guide, you're going to get lesson slides, you're gonna get a student handout that you can print out or use digitally as a Google Doc. Um, and you are also gonna get build instructions for exactly how to build if we're, say we're making this incline plane, you get build instructions uh, for yourself and for the kids exactly how to make this. Um, and those simple lessons, uh, again, can be done in one class period, but then we also wanna encourage students to get involved in the engineering design process. So our lessons that um, are a little bit more involved maybe take one to two class period where students are actually using Blueprint as a prototyping tool to build and create things um, of their own imagination and, um, and in their own ways and creating their own builds. Um, so it really is uh, meant to be used for both of those um, uh, both of those uh, things. We also um, provide with Blueprint um, resources so that you can integrate our system if you're teaching CAD in your classroom. So we're gonna provide all of the 3D models um, for SOLIDWORKS, uh, for Onshape, and Step Files. That's like a catch-all for any 3D modeling software you're using. And we're also gonna be releasing it with a 3D printing guide so that you can uh, use techniques um, that we have already figured out. Uh, we're gonna give them to you about how you can use the 3D printers that may already be in your classroom to make your blueprint builds more exciting and also to, again, reiterate that engineering design process um, and those um, you know, design principles. So, Looks like um, Paul has redone our little fan, and now you can see with a different gear ratio um, that it uh, spins at a different rate. So before it was spinning pretty slowly, now it's spinning really fast, and it's a really easy way to teach about gear ratios um, with the system. I'm gonna get yelled at after this because I was not supposed to do this live, but I did it anyway, and Adrian was amazing <laughs> at making the explanation. But what we took yeah. is we took a three to one ratio and made it one to three. Yeah. So, and I did it in the time that she was talking. So the kids will be able to learn these concepts, spend less time reconfiguring things for the new for the lessons. And so that empowered the content team to be able to write a very rich, content within a class period or within a week of class time which would ordinarily take much longer because of the build process and so uh, if you, one takeaway here from all this is our focus was build less not zero but build less so we could learn more yep um, and we also really uh, tried very hard to in our content work in cross-curricular activities so it's not just based on engineering so uh, we have this inclined plane lesson that teaches you about uh, the mechanical advantages in inclined planes we have a lesson following this one talking about how inclined planes were used to build the pyramids in ancient Egypt and we walk the students through an exercise for um, them theorizing because we don't really know how they built them uh, but we know that they use some sort of in we think that they use some sort of inclined plane um, so we have the students kind of theorize how they would have done it and then actually build out of blueprint what they think those uh, techniques that they used were yeah so one of the interesting things that's happened over the, the course of time now is as really there weren't a lot of engineering stand there were some um, there weren't a whole lot of engineering standards that they are for math or for English or for language arts so um, over the last, you know, teachers have implemented this, districts have implemented programs, engineering one, robotics, things like that, in their own way. And so right now, there's a whole group of kids that maybe they haven't had exposure to this in third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and they're in seventh grade, and now they're doing more complicated systems that are really relying on the fact that the kids had content in their younger grades. So what Blueprint is meant to do is address those students, students that may be too afraid to take their introduction to engineering class in seventh grade or the engineering one class in 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 um, high school well this is meant to break down those um those barriers and break down those um th those like perceived roadblocks for these kids and and for some teachers who have maybe not wanted to dive into teaching this class is really to get them um 
exposed to the, hot, to the possibilities of engineering and robotics learnings so they could maybe pursue that as a, as a career as opposed to assuming that all the students are starting in third grade or fourth grade because it's all over the map now. So that's why we decided to choose seventh through 10th grade introductory classes as a start. Obviously, we're building a modular ecosystem here, so there'll be more complexity layered on as the years go on, but we wanted to start with the simple build um, and mechanical part of the structure because that lays the foundation for everything else to come. Yeah, and just a reminder, we are live and answering your questions as we go. So if you have any questions that you want me and Paul to answer uh, for you, please just put those in the chat right now um, and we'll get them and be able to answer those questions for you. So again, uh, like Paul says, um, with these, uh, this blueprint uh, system, we're meant to take these apart easily. You can see that I have a rope attached to this cart that I'm using to pull it up and down. It's attached with this clamp that I can just easily take off and all of a sudden my rope is um, off of this. I can pop off this and now all of a sudden half of my structure is coming apart. We only have one tool in the system and it's this, it's called the removal tool. You can use it in a few different ways. So first one, uh, these are the connectors that attach everything together in Blueprint. If you stick this little shaft in and pop this right off, uh, it's a really satisfying snap. It's my <laughs> favorite thing in the whole system. Uh, you can just pop these connectors off and then you can also just pop these trusses off right by force. Um, so again, just meant to be easily uh, able to take apart and you can see that this whole thing is coming apart in just a matter of moments here. Um, these do come in individual student build kits um, that have their own storage bin. So we recommend two students per kit, um, which means that you could have one bin that has all the pieces um, for two students and all of the lessons that we provide for Blueprint, um, they utilize uh, just one kit's worth of part. So, uh, what's included in the kit? That's a great question. So we have at least one of every single uh, blueprint part in the kit and together in a student kit, it's over 300 pieces. So we have gears, we have pulleys, we have rope, we have trusses, we have plates, we have connectors. Um, but we have at least one of every single part in the student kit. Um, and again, that's uh, included all in its own storage bin. It has a bottom uh, part of the bin that holds these trusses. And then it has a tray on the top of the bin that you can use to sort out the individual smaller parts. Um, Another question we got is when is it available? Um, so we're actually available, it's actually available right now for pre-orders. Uh, pre um, so you could go on our website right now or contact your sales representative and they can get you all the information to pre-order right now and we're gonna be shipping uh, this summer. Um, so all of our kits will be shipping um, this summer and uh, one student kit, um, again, is uh, we recommend two students per kit. We also sell a class pack that is five student kits plus an additional bin uh, that we call the teacher pack. So it's got extras of all the little small parts that may get lost or um, you know you just might need extra of because you have one student group that just wants to make their tower a little bit bigger or something like that. Um, so we want you to be, uh, provide you with those extra pieces um, to be able to accommodate for all that. So again, uh, we sell them as one student kit or as a class pack, which is five student kits plus a teacher extension. Uh, in that teacher, uh, in that class pack, we always uh, also include a printed educator guide, which is going to give you all sorts of ideas of how to use Blueprint. And also every single student kit is gonna come with five printed challenge cards. So as soon as you get Blueprint into your classroom, you can open up that kit and immediately start doing a challenge. Um, so we have challenges like build something useful for your classroom or build a really interesting building uh, based on you know some cool building that you did some research on or build a fishing rod uh, to see uh, th that is long and can hold a certain amount of weight. Um, so we want, again, you to be able to access Blueprint really quickly and be able to use it as soon as you take it out of the box. So do you want my removal tool? I was using this kind of like a visual aid. Well, see, that's the beauty of this. So removal tool has like <laughs> examples or parts of all the other parts. So while Adrian was hogging the removal tool, <laughs> as you, as some of you may have seen, I used the uh, axle or the shaft to remove the connectors. It does the same, it performs the same function. It's just the tool uh, has a, but, about a little like, other features. Uh, it can help you like, you know, turn a, turn a shaft if someone else is using the crank or yeah. whatever, so. We also uh, can be used as a pry bar, so if I wanna like pry these two things apart, uh, I can just stick this in, 
and everything pops right apart for you. So, um, oh, what's the coolest thing we've built? Oh, that's a great question. Um, man, okay, the coolest thing I've built is I built the other day a functional, um, prototype of a car jack that you would use to like lift up your car when you're changing a tire. And that is actually one of the lessons that we include uh, in the blueprint unit one on simple machines. Uh, and it was just really, really satisfying to use. What about you? So, uh, it isn't one that I built. I'm gonna steal from one of our engineers that our, our engineers like to make things that get uh, destroyed. So they like to try to do yeah. destructive testing. So one of our engineers, he decided to build a bridge. So that's about this yay big that he could stand on. And he built a bridge that he could stand on, but then he decided to like maybe jump up and down a little. And he was able to, you know, that was a lot, that's about 300 pounds of force with the jumping up and down. Uh, and that bridge took it until it didn't. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, and that is one of the free activity, like the free building activities is about uh, bridges and building bridges. So I thought that was pretty cool. A simple, a simple thing, um, but cool. I built a robot arm. Uh, Robot arms aren't all that interesting until you add power. Uh, I'll give you a little little leak that ISTE, we may or may not be displaying some of the power attributes of this system that will be coming later, uh, mostly uh, next year, but we will be showing that at ISTE and how you can bring these to life as opposed to human powered. Um, you may be able to do some electrical power, but I, I, we built a simple robot arm that took me maybe like five minutes to snap together and I could move it. Um, it was a three axis robot that I could move around with my hand, which we felt was an interesting concept to show uh, degrees of freedom and actual true like industrial robotics. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are the ones. I still think the windmill is the coolest from a lesson plan because you can go from, you know, basically just human power, like, okay, I got this thing and I'm just spinning it by hand to now, okay, now I can introduce gear ratios and, and hand power, you know, with, with those sorts of things. And then, you know, you can imagine adding power to it, dumb power that just spins it, and then adding sensors like a button or an environmental sensor that it will react to that all without programming. So we got a comment that says, uh, I can see awesome connections with Robo, Bolt, and Little Bits. So can we. And let me tell you, stay tuned to Sphero Global Challenge Season 4 because we thought that those were so cool that we've actually integrated Blueprint into Sphero Global Challenge for Season 4, which is going to be coming out in just a couple of weeks. Um, and so keep your eye out on that. Um, and we're really excited about how Blueprint can integrate with all of our other products as well. And some of our sales team has been at local shows across the country showing for the first time Blueprint. And the common thing there is using a bolt as the power source for a ton of different uh, blueprint activities. Using bolt as a power source isn't new with the community. All of you, the teachers in our community have used bolt as a power source for their creations, but it's been interesting how expanded that can be while using uh, bolt with the blueprint product line. Yeah. All right, uh, I think that was all the questions that we had. We are so thankful that y'all uh, tuned in for our, again, our first Instagram Live. Uh, we're so excited about Blueprint. Like Paul mentioned, we're gonna be at ISTE, so if you're gonna be there, please make sure you stop by our booth. Watch out on our social media uh, for where we're gonna be and for more exciting events and more exciting announcements uh, with Blueprint coming soon. Thanks, everyone.